Ministries thanks you for watching the Bible studies and Christian news and the prophetic teachings. However, if you will just subscribe by clicking the subscribe button, the bell to be notified for the next video study, and then share with others. These videos can go to countries where they are not allowed to even carry a Bible, and this will help save. Good afternoon, Saints, Church, Bride of Christ, Seekers, Emergent Church, Believers, Unbelievers, Agnostic, and Atheists, and anyone who's interested in finding out about the Lord Jesus Christ through the scriptures and why it is that we believe that he is coming back to take his church soon. All the signs are here. That doesn't mean it's immediate, but there are signs. My name is Pam Gunderson, host of You and Him Ministries Bible Study and Prophetic Christian, Christian Prophetic News. Now, we have a new book that... Uh, has come into um, the readings, which is Nehemiah. So I want to take a look at Nehemiah today because Ezra, as we know, was told in a letter by King Darius that he was to do such and such with the temple. Now, Nehemiah, from what I remember <laughs> of reading, was the cupbearer for the king. So let's go in. I'm going to share my screen. First of all, I want to lift the Lord up. Lord, I lift you up right now in Jesus' name. And anything that we can pray, Lord, to make the devil unhappy, we pray it. Anything we can do to cause him to stumble and leave the children of God alone, we pray, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Uh, just had a sister in the Lord, Lord uh, in the Lord, call me Jesus, Lord. I ask for healing for her and hers, and it should not be that this sickness was let loose in the world. However, Jesus or Jehovah Rophi is our healer. It is the one attribute of God known by Jehovah Rophi. And we call on you right now to heal those who have not, who are ill, who are uh, have sickness on them, that you sent your word to heal them. And I send the same word right now. Those stripes that he shed on that was uh, on the cross and the blood was for our healing. And Lord, we claim that today for anyone who reaches out to you for that healing father in jesus blessed holy name now let's go into nehemiah i'll go ahead and share the screen here and we will see what's what uh, i think i uh need to hold on a minute i need to go into the blue bible i use the blue letter bible because it's very good uh, there's a lot of commentaries in here. I'm going to do the New Living Translation. Even though I say that I like, uh, if you're going to study in depth, you want to study with the uh, New King James Version or the King James. However, for reading through and not knowing who all is going to be reading with you. Now, I'm going to go ahead because I'm behind you all. And I'm going to start with chapter one. Okay, these are the memoirs of Nehemiah, son of Hakaliah, in late autumn in the month of Kislev, in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes' reign, I was at the fortress of Susa. Now, you will remember Susa has to do with, uh, actually, I need to share my screen because I don't see y'all. I also need to get rid of this. I need to go back in here and screen share. There we go. <laughs> now, in verse 2, Hanani, or Hanani, 
One of my brothers came to visit me with some of the other men who had just arrived from Judah. I asked them about the Jews who had returned there from captivity and about how things were going in Jerusalem. Verse 3, they said to me, things are not going well for those who return to the province of Judah. They are in great trouble and disgrace. Well, Nehemiah is in Babylon, or Susa, part of Babylon, Persia. And um, the wall of Jerusalem has been torn down and the gates have been destroyed by fire. When I heard this, I sat down and wept. In fact, for days I mourned, fasted, and prayed to the God of heaven. This is a big deal. He's a Jew. He's in captivity. Then I said, O oh Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of unfailing love with those who love him and obey his commands, listen to my prayer or hear my prayer. Look down and see me praying night and day for your people, Israel. I confess that we have sinned against you. Yes, even my own family and I have sinned. We have sinned terribly by not obeying the commands, decrees, and regulations that you gave us through your servant Moses. Verse 8, please remember what you told your servant Moses. If you are unfaithful to me, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands and live by them, then even if you are exiled to the ends of the earth, I will bring back, bring you back to the place I've chosen for my name to be honored. And that is in Jerusalem. Why do you think the devil is fighting so hard for Palestine? They do not own Jerusalem. They are not part of Jerusalem. The Palestinians are not Jews. They are a different people. Uh, let's see. Verse 10. The people you rescued by your great power and strong hand are your servants. 11. Oh, Lord, please hear my prayer. Listen to the prayers of those of us who delight in honoring you. Please grant me success today by making the king favorable to me. Put it into his heart to be kind to me. In those days, I was the king's cupbearer. Okay, I did remember. That, that's exactly who he was. Chapter 2, verse 1. Early in the following spring, in the month of Nisan, or Nisan, during the 20th month of King Artaxerxes' reign, I was serving the king his wine. I had never before appeared sad in his presence. So the king asked me, why are you looking so sad? You don't look sick to me. You must be deeply troubled. Then I was terrified, but I replied, long live the king. How can I not be sad for the city where my ancestors are buried is in ruins and the gates have been destroyed by fire. The king asked, well, how can I help you with a prayer to the God of heaven? I replied, if it please the king and if you are pleased with me, your servant, send me to Judah to rebuild the city where my ancestors are buried. Verse 6, the king with the, with the queen sitting beside him asked, how long will you be gone? When will you return? After I told him how long I would be gone, the king agreed to my request. 7, I also said to the king, if it please the king, let me have letters addressed to the governors of the province west of the Euphrates River instructing them to let me travel safely through their territories on my way to Judah. And please give me a letter addressed to Asaph, Asaph, the manager of the king's forest, instructing him to give me timber. I will need it to make beams for the gates of the temple fortress, for the city walls, and for a house for myself. Oh, interesting. A house for himself. And the king granted these requests because the gracious hand of God was on me. That's an interesting request. And a house for myself. Verse 9, when I came to the governors of the province west of the Euphrates River, I delivered the king's letters to them. The king, I should add, had sent along army officers and horsemen to protect me. Verse 10, but when Sanballat, the Honorite, and Tobiah, the Ammonite official, heard of my arrival, they were very displeased that someone had come to help the people of Israel. 
Nehemiah inspects Jerusalem's wall. Verse 11. So I arrived in Jerusalem three days later. I slipped out during the night, taking only a few others with me. I had not told anyone about the plans God had put in my heart for Jerusalem. We took no pack animals with us except the donkey I was riding. After dark, I went through the valley gate, past the jackal's wall, and over to the dung gate to inspect the broken walls and burned gates. I'm going to stop the share right there. He mentions the jackal's wall. What is the jackal's wall? Well, let's look it up. What is the jackal's wall? Let's go back into a share here, and then I will address the jackal that I see. Okay, where am I? Somehow, oh, here we are. There we go. What was the jackal's wall in Jerusalem? Okay. Jackal's, Jackal's Well? Am I reading it wrong? It Jackal's Well. Sorry about that. Or Serpent's Well. And over to the Dung Gate. Okay. Verse 14. Then I went to the Fountain Gate and to the King's Pool, but my donkey couldn't get through the rubble. That was the wall broken down. So though I, it was still dark, I went up to the Kidron Valley instead, inspecting the wall before I turned back and entered again at the valley gate. So he's inspecting this wall. <clears throat> Verse 16. The city officials did not know I'd been out there or what I was doing, for I had not yet said anything to anyone about my plans. I had not spoken to the Jewish leaders, the priests, the nobles, the officials, or anyone else in the administration. But now I said to them, you know very well what trouble we are in. Jerusalem lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire. Let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and end this disgrace. Then I told them about how the gracious hand of God had been on me and about my conversation with the king. They replied at once, yes, let's rebuild the wall. So they began the good work. Huh. Verse 19, but when Sanballat, Tobiah, and Geshem the Arab heard of our plan, they scoffed contemptuously. What are you doing? Are you rebelling against the king, they asked? 20, I replied, the God of heaven will help us succeed. We, his servants, will start rebuilding this wall, but you have no share, legal right, or historic claim in Jerusalem. Now, I've put up verses... Three through five of Nehemiah for tomorrow, the tw oh, well, today, the 26th. And so you all read ahead of me and then I'll come in. And if the Lord speaks to me, I will confirm what it is or not, not confirm what it is that you all are reading, which I think is a very good idea. Now, I also want to look at, um, Okay, I'm letting you know right now what the verses. Our daily manna for today, the 27th of July, is Nehemiah chapters 6 and 7. Psalms chapter 89, verses 5 through 10. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 28. Acts chapter 26, verses 1 through 26. Again, that is for Wednesday, July 27th, 2022. And God bless you. Good reading. These scriptures. So I want to go ahead and look at, let's see. Uh, let's look at Psalm 89, 1 through 4. Psalm 89, 1 through 4. Psalm 89. A psalm of Ethan the Ezraite. I will sing of the Lord's unfailing love forever. Young and old will hear of your faithfulness. Two, your unfailing love will last forever. Your faithfulness is an endure is an, as enduring as the heavens. Three, 
The Lord said, I have made a covenant with David, my chosen servant. I have sworn this oath to him. I will establish your descendants as kings forever. They will sit on your throne from now until eternity. Let's go back to that. The Lord said in verse 3 of 89, I have made a covenant with David. In other words, he made a promise to David, my chosen servant. I have sworn this oath to him. Verse 4, I will establish David's descendants as kings forever. They will sit on your throne from now until eternity. And David's seat is also the seat that the Lord Jesus Christ will take up when he comes into Jerusalem for the millennium. Oh, now let's go ahead and look at Proverbs. I'm not reading Acts with you right now. I It is a whole uh, book that you all need to read in the New Testament. And I will get into that with you all at some other time. I'm going to get rid of this. I don't know why that's there. And um, let's go into Proverbs. Uh, 21, 27. Okay. That verse states, the sacrifice of an evil person is detestable, especially when it is offered with wrong motives. Amen. Amen. And then, of course, you have Acts for Today, which is Acts 26, 1 through 32, which is probably the book, one of the books I'm going to take up and minister out of, but I haven't decided yet. And so I'm not going to read that whole book and give uh, something on it right now. But I did want to get into the word jackal. Um, a jackal is a fox and you don't want a fox in your hen house we have many farmers that uh, have chickens and one of the predators of these chickens and I think also sheep any livestock you don't want a fox. We have a fox in Washington, D.C. We also have a fox in Washington State. These are men who disturb the sheep and steal, make themselves comfortable, run off with the things that the people need for them and use it for themselves. They are counterfeits. They are Manchurian candidates. They're very difficult to root out. Uh, Jesus called, uh, I believe it was Nero, you old fox. So they are men in politics that have ill intent towards the people. Uh, the scripture states, when there is a king that is godly, the people rejoice. But when there is a king that is ungodly and corrupt, the people do not rejoice and get a bad taste in their mouth, especially for politics today. And I've just had a discussion with someone that I care for very dearly and we are in disagreement about politics. Um, I truly believe what I'm seeing is a person who is a Christian and feels that God is calling them into the political arena needs to be very sure that they can stand under the pressure 
that they are going to have the minute they obtain that office. Because the minute they obtain that office, if they have anything in their background that can be used against them, they can be bought off. So my word today, and it's just, I am just uh, giving a message I just heard from someone else, and I'm just delivering it to you all. Whoever out there thinks that they can bear up under the scrutiny of a Congress who has a certain thing that they want to do, but you won't go along with it. We can look at Joe Man Manchin right now. I find it very interesting that Joe Manchin is able to stand up and we're not hearing any ill reports about him. This is a person that I would like, and he's he is not of the political party that I believe is uh, is a bad, uh, uh, he's not, he's in a political party that is, destructive destructive but he's holding his ground and i find that amazing and i respect that do they not have anything they can pull out to cause him to have to vote their way i mean like an affair or uh has taken a bribe or whatever if a person can go into the political arena and has nothing in their background, or if there is something in their background like Trump had and still bear up under it and not care that the people know about it, which he didn't. I'm sure he probably didn't want it to come out, but it did. But it didn't stop him from running. But when he went into the White House, the pressure that had to have come on him, he made some promises they all do. I believe he made some promises he could not keep because of the terrible war that came against him. But I also have seen some people that have come in and made promises. They've not kept them because they were lying at the very get-go or they were caught in line. We have a president who made the statement, if you have the shot... He didn't say exactly you won't get co uh, get COVID, but you have less chance of getting COVID. Well, he made that statement on two or three different occasions when he came in to talk. Now he has COVID. At first, I thought they just told him he had COVID to put him in a room somewhere to shut him up because he was making so many mistakes, saying he had cancer when he doesn't have cancer and this and that. And, uh, I mean... This man reminds me of Rosanna, 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 Dana uh, from Saturday Night Live. It's kind of like, uh, oh, never mind. But he never says, never mind. He just doesn't get it straight. He has made so many mistakes. He is really causing a problem. Uh, He's exhibiting signs of this and that or whatever it could be. Nonetheless, he said, you won't get COVID. Well, did he have the shots or not? And is he telling the truth? Many people who have taken the COVID shot have gotten COVID. So that's not the truth. He didn't. It was like, I'm pushing people to have this shot whether they want this shot or not. And that's pretty much what was going on. And so if you don't know about a person and you wish to spend time analyzing them, but are you really going to get the truth with somebody who's running? Only God knows that. So the very best advice I can give anyone is if you've noticed someone that you feel God has put on your heart to uh, go into office, pray for them. Pray that they will have the strength to hold up under the scrutiny and the dossiers that these people will have against them if they will not do what they tell them to do. Or pray that they will not make the wrong move and go into office because it will be a total disaster for them. They might get their pension. They might get a little bit of... To my mind's eye, someone who goes into office shouldn't be expecting any money. 
it was in the day with Washington and the ones that first became presidents, they didn't take pay. They did it voluntarily. This it was all volunteer. Now it's a career, a career to do, put money in their pockets. These people are becoming very wealthy. We have Pelosi going to Taiwan and everybody's upset about it. Why is she going? You might ask yourself some of these questions and trying to get them out of office, it's almost like trying to get cockroaches out of your house. Once they're in, they're in. And I can tell you that's the truth. When I lived in Virginia for a little spell, I didn't have a lot of money and I had a small apartment. And on the street, because I uh, didn't have the money to buy a bed, but I had a mattress. There was a bed on the street, free, free. I brought it into my apartment. And guess what I brought into my apartment? Cockroaches. I had a terrible time getting them out. So be very careful what you pick up for free or what advice you get for free. Because if it's the wrong advice, it's going to cause you a problem. Um, I don't know. As I said before, I do not plan any of these broadcasts. These are video podcasts. Video podcast broadcasts. I am spirit-filled, born again. Whether you like me or you don't like me, Jesus likes me. Doesn't mean he's happy with everything that I do. But he loves me. Maybe he doesn't like me. Maybe he just loves me. Whatever it is, I love him and I like him. And I like the fact that this is what he's given me a chance to do. He hasn't shut me off yet. So <laughs> he has plenty of mercy and compassion. Anyway, I've given you the scripture verses. I'll probably see you again tomorrow on the 27th. It depends on how my day is wrapping up. Yesterday was fresh pineapple canned and I boiled all of the skins after I had taken everything out and canned the pineapple and I and I boiled it in a pressure cooker for an hour and then when I brought it out I took the skins and I put them in my Vitamix my um Vitamixer okay and ground it all up. And then I pressed all the pulp that I could get through a mesh strainer. And I thought, this doesn't look like pineapple juice and it's very sour. So I put, uh, I think a fourth of a cup or half of a cup of sugar in, and I put them in the refrigerator warm. I just took one out and it turned into juice. This is not this is not the miracle of the wedding of Cana, but to me, it tastes so good. It's so fresh and wonderful. You can see it. Is that not wonderful? Let's see if I can get it better. Yes. Get it up to the camera. It is so good. So I would suggest, even if you don't can the pineapple, uh, and there's a lot of benefits I hear in this. Uh, I thought, you want me to blend and grind in my Vitamix? Uh, the pulp and everything is all of those uh, brown things. And mm, I thought, that's not going to work. It just can't be right. Well, do you see anything in here? No, it turned in. It was a nectar. It was a nectar when I put it in the refrigerator. Now it's a juice because it all calmed down. There is nothing in here distasteful. So I just praise God. Yay! So I'm I'm going to get a couple more pineapples and just uh, have them. I wanted to uh, have the juice to last for preserving food, but that's probably not going to happen. I need to do more research on it. Some people are actually making the nectar and they're freezing it in ice, ice um, cube trays in their freezer. I have no room in ice cube trays. I have ice cubes in my ice cube tray and I have uh, freezers full of food that all that food has got to be taken out, canned uh, to get a, to get the freezers empty in case something does happen with our grid. I would much rather depend on canned food than I would on the freezer. So it's just a word to the wise folks. I could be wrong. And, uh, 
anyone over here in Aberdeen, I do need to let you all know. Um, Pam, you know who I'm talking to. I don't want to mention your last name, but I saw you at Grocery Outlet a couple weeks ago and told you about the um, the onions. Uh, not the Vidalias, but the other ones. The really, uh, the really good ones. They start with a W, I think it is. And so they are stock full of produce right now. So much produce, cabbage. I've never seen so much produce in my life. The prices are pretty high, but heads of cabbage that are huge. So I have two or three, and I have this wonderful slaw uh, uh, mixture that you boil on the stove and like cool. It's wonderful. And so I just am so, I am, I, God is so good to us. You know, he is so good to us. This next section, please take me seriously on the next section. It'll be right after this. It follows. God loves you. He doesn't want you lost. He, it's not that he doesn't want you serving somebody else, but he knows that the person that you are serving, if it is not him, wishes you ill, wishes your death, wishes you hell. Please don't look at me because I'm strange, but go to the Lord, please, in Jesus' blessed name. Take her seriously on this next part of this video and just know that I am telling you the truth. I am not lying to you. God has been and is the only blessing and through other people. In Jesus' name, I just pray for you right now. In Jesus' blessed name, please, please accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Please, so you have the pleasure of serving him, which will be the delight and blessing of your life. I will see you again on the next video broadcast or podcast, whatever you want to call this. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless you, heal you, deliver you, and save you. If there is anyone that has not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, if I have not scared you into repentance or common sensed you into repentance, I will be more than happy to say, let's see, what am I doing here? Uh, I don't think I can minimize this. No, I cannot minimize it. So I have to move it down. You can still see me, but I can't see you. Well, I can't see you anyway. But I finally found the simple salvation prayer. I don't have to grasp for it. Anyway, it's as easy as A, B, C. The Lord wants you saved. And so do I. A means that you are admitting that you've sinned. We've all sinned. I'm a born-again Christian. I sin and have to repent on a daily basis. B, but that, but I've already welcomed Christ into my life as well as the Holy Spirit. You're doing this for the first time. He stays with you. He will never leave you. B, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And C, confess him as your Savior. If you'll say this prayer out loud, with a sincere heart and mean it and repent. I believe in Heavenly Father. I admit that I have sinned. I repent. I believe in my heart you raised Jesus from the dead. I confess with my mouth Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Right now, I receive your forgiveness, Jesus, by your blood. I am saved in Jesus' name. And we all said amen. And right now, if you prayed that prayer in the comment section below, right here, where you see that little carrot mark, open that up. Then uh, do say, I did. Then go to youandhimministries.com and tell us in the email section or chat section at the bottom of that website that you got saved. 
Then you can ask for a Bible or a Bible believing church, ask for help. And we, you're not going to go on a mail. Just give us it. what it is that you need or prayer requests. Also, you can call me at 833-726-8255 or 833-PAM-TALKS. My email address is pam at unionministries.com. Pam at youandhim.info. The mailing address is 800 East Wishkos Street, Suite 213, Aberdeen, Washington, 98520. And you will see the credits while I'm over here. You will also see the credits at the end of the video. Now, at the very end, what I like to do is do a benediction, which is found in Jude chapter 1, verses 24 through 25. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish in the presence of his glory with rejoicing to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. And since you are now saved, may the, the Lord, the light of the Lord shine upon you. May his face shine upon you. May you get baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sin Get into a Bible-believing church and immediately get baptized. Receive his Holy Spirit. Receive that power. Be in his will. Do what he says. Some of you, he'll hear him speak to you right away. Some of you, uh, we all have different anointings and giftings, which we're born with. And so he will give you yours. He will tell you what it is that he wants you to do. He will bless you. He will never leave you. He says, I will never leave you. Once you accept him and don't turn your back on him if, and don't, because something doesn't happen right away. Sometimes things take years. A word that God speaks to you may take years. He can show you a picture and that picture will not show up for years or could show up just like that instantly. Don't put God on a timetable. Okay? Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Stop the fear. We're not telling you to prepare out of fear. We're telling you to prepare out of wisdom okay sound mind and wisdom look around you of what's going and don't let anybody talk you out of good sense okay anyway i'm pamela gunderson host of you and him ministries bible study and christian prophetic news and if you liked this video please like and share and then click the bell and you'll be notified for the next video. I wish you a blessed day. Please be saved, be healed, and be delivered. And praise God that my knee is healing by every means that God has made possible for me, at least at this point without surgery, that his hand is on me and his hand is on you if you are a child of God. And that only happens if you accept him as Christ your Savior.